way. The store's policy was very clear. Yeah, well, maybe I care about the environment. Right, did that ever occur to you? Wallace and Gromit? I mean, that weighed like 50 pounds. How many trees gave their lives for that? It just goes to the dump. Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I got another Crazy Current Events video. If you aren't familiar with these, these are videos in which I cover ridiculous stories, um, give my reaction to them while um, having some gameplay in the background. Also, I got a lore video that should be out by this weekend. Um, but anyways, um, this ridiculous thing, this happened over a week ago, but basically this was in the UK, and this was a group that I had covered on the channel before, which is, you know, called Just Stop Oil. These are a bunch of um, climate change protesters that basically want the Great Britain and all, I guess, all countries in the world to stop using fossil fuels. Um, and I'm not even arguing against climate change in this video but I'm more arguing about just the ridiculous things these protesters done because these protesters have disrupted multiple things. They just disrupted a world championship snookers tournament. They basically ruined the tournament. Um, they sabotaged one of the games. They almost sabotaged the game, the other game, but that, that one was stopped on. Um, these protesters have done ridiculous things. They have, you know, thrown, um, you know, they have thrown tomato soup on Van Gogh's paintings. They have, you know, sprayed, you know, orange paint on the streets, on stores. Um, they have gone into stores and they have basically dumped milk on the floor. Um, these these were other protesters who were also protesting for a plant-based diet. But a lot of these protests are basically linked. And apparently, this is the new way to protest in this day and age now, apparently. Vandalism. Vandalism disrupting public events is apparently the new way to protest. But... I'll play this video for you guys. You guys are not going to believe this. This is like something that you would see at The Onion. It's just so ridiculous. So let's take a look at this right here. Fall. Robert Milken, seven. Drop every four. Well, I don't quite know what that was for. Oh. Everybody trying to enjoy the snooker. I've never seen anything like this in 25 years of watching or working on the Crucible Theatre snooker. And we will now have a significant delay. So yeah, that was them disrupting the um that was them disrupting the Snookers tournament. Now I didn't even I, if I'm even pronouncing it wrong, I'm sorry. Um that's just how I'm reading it, Snooker. But um I ha actually had no idea what this sport was. I'm very familiar with billiards, you know, pool. Uh, I played that a, a bunch. I thought this was actually pool at first, but I realized that there's a lot of red colored balls on the table, so I really had no idea how this sport is played. But it's a table sport, you know, play with a, a pool stick. But anyways, um if you watch the clip. You'll see the idiot that actually jumps on the table and just sprays the um, orange powder, whatever that was, on it. He's wearing a shirt that, you know, it says, just stop oil. But if you actually pay attention to the right side, the right side, you actually had a woman who actually tried to do the exact same thing. And she tried to glue her hands to the table. Then they stopped her as well. Now, the thing about this is this was act this is actually a common strategy these protesters do. Um, there was a Dutch TV show that was a few months ago. Some idiot protester actually interrupted the TV show and jumped on the table and actually just glued his hands to the table. And there was also another incident where there was a car dealership. I, I covered this also. I believe the car dealership was in Germany. But um, basically what happened is the in the car dealership, the protesters actually went in there and they glued their hands to the car dealership. And they did this right before closing. And for some reason, I don't know why, the protesters thought that the staff was going to stay there with them, that they were going to stay there. But the staff was basically like, you know what, screw this, you know, my shift's over, I got work in the morning, I got a family to go to, I don't have time for this nonsense. And the staff just basically just closed the doors and just turned off the lights and just went home for the night. And the protesters were actually complaining that the staff left them there, glued on the floor. But you were the idiots who ran into the car dealership and chose to glue your hands to the floor. You expect that people are going to stay there hours after their shift with you? I, I don't know exactly what, what 
what what's going on here and then they were complaining that they wanted a food delivery eventually i believe they had the police had arrived the police were called by the people at the car dealership and the police had arrested um them but this just shows you these protesters do completely unreasonable things ridiculous things and then they're just absolutely surprised when people just hate their guts i don't know what they are trying to accomplish here this is absolute stupidity but the thing about this is this is not helping your movement. This is not helping your protest movement. You know, they want the UK to go completely fossil fuel um, free, which is, you know, practically impossible right now. Maybe in the future over time they can, but just having it done in just this rapid of a rate is just pretty much impossible. Just the amount of fossil fuel cars they're driving around, especially in the countryside. In cities, what these protesters don't understand is that in cities, people drive more electric cars, but in the countryside, people actually drive around on gasoline cars a lot. People in the countryside have less money than people in the cities, and so they're driving around in gasoline trucks. A lot of tractors are run on gasoline, a lot of trucks out there run on gasoline. This is exactly why the protests actually happened in France, you know, a few years ago, that whole Yellow Jacket protest, because the people who approved that new tax on gasoline were people that were mostly in the cities. People in the cities drive electric cars, and they didn't understand how many people in the countryside actually drove gasoline cars. That's why the people, the protests had gotten so angry at the new gasoline tax. But the thing about this is, if these protesters actually want to make a difference, you know, why don't you protest in front of the gasoline, um, uh, you know, companies' buildings? You know, why in a, in a place that you're at least allowed to protest? You know, why don't you? Why don't you go and give more TV interviews? I'm sure people will give you TV interviews without disrupting stuff, without, you know, causing chaos like this. But um, unfortunately, they don't do that. They have appeared on TV. I've seen them appear on TV, and they are very unsympathetic. They always just, they basically just compare themselves to, they compare themselves to people being right in this day and age. They basically say, you know, in the future, people will realize that we were right, we were in the right, and we were the heroes. They're so I've seen several interviews with these guys. They never apologize for the disruption they've done. They just waste people's time people's time that have nothing to do with, you know, with climate change, nothing to do with fossil fuels, and I don't understand how a snookers tournament has anything whatsoever to do with this. What? What does this have to do with this exactly? Nothing. Basically, wouldn't it have made more sense if you tried to reach out to the players, the players who are playing snookers, because a lot of the fans look up to the players and maybe try to have one of the players speak up about climate change or something like that? That actually might make a difference instead of just disrupting the event, because if I'm watching a sporting event, if I'm watching, you know, pool, you know, if I'm, because I play pool, if I'm watching a billiards tournament pool and I see a protester disrupt a tournament, just jump up on the table, I'd be pissed off and I would just get really annoyed by them. I wouldn't care at all for their cause. It would just make me dislike them heavily. And the thing about this is the only thing that they are accomplishing here is they are getting more attention. That is true. By doing disrupting things like this, throwing, you know, tomato soup on paintings, you know, interrupting sporting events like this, gluing your hands on TV shows, stuff like that. They are um, uh, getting more attention, but it's not the type of attention that you want. It's very negative attention. People are getting pissed off. People are getting annoyed and it's just making people absolutely hate your guts. I don't understand how this cause is supposed to work. You know, getting people to absolutely hate your guts is somehow apparently going to help your cause. How exactly? And I'll tell you this, if I was the guy that was playing that match, I would be furious because imagine if you're in, this is, this is not just a regular game. But this is some kind of tournament. And if anybody knows more about this tournament, let me know in the comments down below if you know exactly what happened afterwards. Because I read that the table that had the, the paint thrown on it, the, the powder, whatever it was, that table was vacuumed up and they canceled that game. The table was too damaged. They couldn't, um, so they committed vandalism and interrupted the sporting event. They couldn't keep playing. The other table where the woman tried to glue her hands to it, it resumed after an hour, I believe, and it played. But I have this article here and it says that Milkins was 11-0 up in the early stages of the opening frame when a man suddenly ran out of the crowd, jumped on the table, and began emptying the powder. It took 12 seconds for two security guards to get down the stairs of the Crucible Theater in Sheffield and bundle the activist away, but the damage had been done. So this table, this table, this game was ruined, and it says later on in the article, soon afterwards, World Snooker ruled the tablecloth was damaged beyond repair and would have to be replaced overnight. As a result, the Milkins-Perry match will now resume on Tuesday evening at 7 p.m., with the venue being opened early on Thursday at 9.30 a.m., so the first round tie uh, can conclude. So I'm really curious whether they're going to set the table up to be exactly how it was beforehand, because imagine if you're in the middle of just winning this match, you're in the middle of winning it. Um, I don't know that score right there, 11-0. I'm just assuming that he was winning by a lot, so I, I don't know how this game is played, but imagine you're that guy. Imagine you're in the middle of winning the tournament, and then this happens. This stuff. 
You know, if, if I was the, the player, I would give an interview and I would basically say in that interview, a bunch of idiots just ruined my game. I was just trying to, to play a game, have fun here, win a tournament, uh, play for my fans, and instead an idiot just jumped on the table and ruined it. And this is not going to stop, guys. This is just going to keep going on and on. And so, like I said, this is in this day and age, you know, people think that the, the right way to protest now is apparently to glue your hands to the, uh, to the street, glue your hands on tables, on TV shows, interrupt sporting events, and cause vandalism. Apparently, that is the new way to protest, but that's not really protesting. That's instead breaking the law. If you want to protest, you know, do it legally, do it in a public place, and actually try to educate people on your cause instead of trying to annoy people. Annoying the hell out of people is not going to get them to like your cause and support your movement. But that's just pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think down below of this. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, guys.